Next up, well, the big story emerging from Taiwan and the Taiwanese incumbent president Tsai Ing-wen has won, it seems, the presidential polls by a decisive margin already. The opposition candidate, Hang Kyu Yu, uh, has conceded defeat, saying his rival, President Tsai Ing-wen, has won a second term. I want to thank each and every person who voted for the Tsai Lai ticket, as well as everyone who supported our DPP. The election will be a blow to Beijing in a, uh, in a sense, as Tsai and Wing has pitched herself as a defender of Taiwan's liberal values against the increasingly authoritarian shadow cast by Beijing under President Xi Jinping. China and uh, the Hong Kong unrest have become major elements in the election as Beijing ramped up efforts to get Taiwan to accept its rule both through military intimidation and an offer of the one country, two systems model. The vote uh, is also, of course, sending ripple effects far beyond its borders, uh, with the two presidential rivals laying out very different visions for Taiwan's future. Tsai Ing-wen, the incumbent Taiwanese uh, president, uh, heads the Democratic Progressive Party, which favors an independent Taiwan, Tsai Ing-wen. Uh, was first elected in 2016 as the president of Taiwan, along with a majority in Taiwan's legislature called the Yuan. Tsai Ing-wen, in uh, her first tenure, tried to steer Taiwan further away from China's orbit. Her opponent, who has uh, now uh, conceded defeat, uh, that is Han Kyu Yu of the Kuomintang Party, favored warmer ties with China. Han wanted closer economic and cultural ties uh, with Beijing and sought a less adversarial relationship with mainland China to secure Taiwan's economy in the long term. Taiwan is the world's 21st largest economy, but ever since 1949, when the Civil War ended, the Chinese Communist Party has considered Taiwan to be a mutinous breakaway province that must be reunited with China by force if necessary. All right, joining us now to talk a little bit more about the elections in Taiwan is uh, Grace Lee live with us. And Grace, thanks very much for talking to us this evening. Now, uh, what exactly are the phys figures indicating? It's clearly a sweep as of now for Tsai Ing-wen. We don't know if all the votes have been counted. Just take us through the numbers and, of course, uh, what, what are the indications on both sides? Yeah, Tsai Ing-wen uh, currently has a huge margin uh, over her two rivals, and it seems she will win by a landslide at this point. The uh, the kind of disparity seems to be only growing uh, as time goes by. The official result will come out at 10 p.m. local time, and that's just uh, a, a couple minutes away. So a lot of her supporters here in Taipei have been celebrating. There is uh, a large crowd gathered uh, just a couple feet away from me here at her uh, at her headquarters. Now, uh, people say that this is not only a victory for Tsai Ing-wen, but it's also a victory for uh, the voters who voted, they say, to try and defend uh, the democracy of Taiwan, especially with what's been happening in, happening in Hong Kong. A couple of Hong Kong protesters were also at the HQ at the moment, uh, waving their black flags and giving thanks to the Taiwanese voters for doing what they can to try and preserve their democracy. So all in all, it seems that Tsai Ing-wen's uh, campaign worked in favor of her and Beijing's campaign to try and drive voters away from her ha has failed. And uh, tonight she is claiming victory at this moment. It seems like a clear win for her. Absolutely. It seems like a clear win for her. But um, Grace, what does this win indicate for China? Uh, and of course, as you pointed out, Tsai Ing-wen has repeatedly trumpeted, uh, you know, Taiwan as the world's only Chinese speaking democracy. So certainly worries there emerging for China from this. 
Well, this definitely indicates a kind of a thorny future for Taiwan and China. The past couple of years haven't been great for their relationship either. Tsai Ing-wen has been very openly defiant of Beijing's rule. And when uh, Beijing, uh, you know, kind of said that, hey, why don't we try this one country, two systems rule? She has downright refused. That's the same rule that Hong Kong and Macau are governed under. And uh, Tsai Ing-wen and her supporters have pointed the finger towards Hong Kong saying, hey, it's not working there. It's not going to work in Taiwan. So she's been very defiant of Beijing's efforts to try and unite with Taiwan. Going forward, it's not going to be any easier for China. And this is a a huge thorn in the side for them, especially as they try to deal with the anti-government protests in Hong Kong, which have been going on for seven months and counting now. Yeah. And those protests, in a sense, in Hong Kong, uh, Grace, uh, sort of fueled, uh, you know, the sentiment in Taiwan. And and vis-a-vis, I mean, vis-a-vis Taiwan, and then Taiwan, of course, uh, the election win for Tsai Ing-wen, it seems, will boost uh, the pro-democracy voices in Hong Kong as well. So it's played both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you remember a couple couple of months ago, Tsai Ing-wen was hugely unpopular here in Taiwan, and it looked like she was going for a huge defeat. Uh, her party last year suffered a very embarrassing defeat, and uh, it seemed like that was going to be her future. But what all what turned all of that around was the protests in Hong Kong. That kind of fueled fears here in Taiwan that if they do go obediently with China, Hong Kong and its protests that's what their future might look like. So it gave them a window into potentially what Taiwan could be like under China's rule. And that's driven a lot of voters to the polls today. A lot of younger voters who say they're afraid of what their lives might look like. They want to maintain this status quo in Taiwan. And that is what Tsai Ing-wen has promised them. She has promised to defend Taiwan against Beijing's rule and to try and preserve uh, the kind of current lifestyle that people have here. And that's very comforting for the younger voters. Right. Very comforting for the younger voters. But do you think Tsai Ing-wen will push now for the island uh, to be considered a sovereign nation as the UN doesn't recognize uh, the self-governing island as as an independent nation? Uh, Are there voices for uh, for that as well now in Taiwan? Well, it's no question that Tsai Ing-wen has pushed for that in the past. Uh, And, of course, it's not clear what plans she has for the future. But that's one of the reasons why Beijing has held campaigns against her and have made it very clear that they don't welcome her as a leader of Taiwan. Uh, As for the younger voters, it's been a mixed bag in terms of the people I've talked to. Some of them say, well, yeah, maybe we can stay uh, the way that we are and try not to push our luck with sovereignty. But on the other hand, other hand, uh, the protests in Hong Kong are exactly what have kind of been fueling this anti-Beijing, anti-mainland China sentiments here in Taiwan, where uh, they, they just don't want to be part of the, the, the system that Beijing has put up. Uh, so going ahead into the future, it's not completely clear what Tsai Ing-wen has uh, in plan, but certainly uh, it, it's no question that, you know, she has this kind of uh, sentiment that she wants to be Separate, a separate entity in entirely from Beijing. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, Grace, now, the United States is a, is a major player in Taiwan as well. It exerts itself in Taiwan. So that uh, will, of course, uh, emerge as another flashpoint for, between the United States and China at some point, we're given Tsai Ing-wen's preference for United States, as we've seen time again. Absolutely. I mean... Uh, you know, the past couple of years in particular under Donald Trump, uh, it's become more and more of an, of an annoyance for Beijing, this growing, budding relationship between uh, Taipei and Washington, especially the purchase of uh, these fighter jets. Very recently, Taipei uh, purchased a, a whole horde of fighter jets from the U.S. to try and defend itself physically from China. But on the flip side, it's not clear whether those kinds of tactics are 
are working. There were a lot of talk about uh, online infiltration of China here in Taiwan during the elections. And, uh, of course, experts have pointed to the fact that, uh, that Taiwan was not ready at all for any kind of cyber attack, propaganda attack from the mainland when it came to the elections. And so, uh, you know, this budding relationship between the U.S. and Taiwan, very physical. And, of course, they're buying these jets and, and ramping themselves up for any kind of physical attack from Beijing. But when it comes to the minds of voters, it's still very exposed because of the fact that they haven't prepared uh, against Chinese propaganda. Right. And also, what does this mean for the opposition uh, leader who uh, may or may not, as we don't know at the moment, uh, eaten into some of the majority that Tsai Ing-wen enjoys in, in Parliament? What are the indications that you're getting? Well, Han Kuo-yu is still largely popular down in the South where, you know, he is mayor and, uh, you know... By all means, he did get a lot of votes today, and it is clear that uh, a lot of people from the older generation do like him and find him comforting. You know, he's still, his official stance is still that he doesn't want to comply under China's one country, two systems rule, but it's just that he's been a little bit more liberal and a little bit more willing to work with China when it comes to these issues. So uh, when it comes to his future, he probably still does have uh, a, a lively political career ahead of him, but it's it's just that external factors like the Hong Kong protests and this pressure from Beijing is what ultimately drove voters to go and vote for Tsai Ing-wen. Right, absolutely. Uh, Grace, thanks very much indeed for joining us with the latest there. We are going to come back to you for more on this as the final re results are announced officially. But it, all indications, of course, emerging that Tsai Ing-wen has emerged as the winner in this election that has been so crucial both for Taiwan, uh, the self-governing island, as well as uh, also, for, uh, also for, of course, the for China and the United States. And these are live visuals at the moment that we're getting from uh, Taiwan of the celebrations, of course, uh, uh, as far as Tsai Ing-wen's uh, win is concerned, a huge mandate, sweeping a victory for her, even though the opposition leader seems to be, as Grace was saying, uh, popular with the older generation who wants a more conservative relationship with China, a warmer ties with China, but clearly that is not the mood uh, of the people of uh, Taiwan. Uh, in general, uh, given the seven months of unrest that we've seen in Hong Kong uh, and that, of course, reverberating here in Taiwan as well. And uh, Tsai Ing-wen has, of course, been somebody who has advocated for, uh, for democracy, has advocated for, uh, well, lesser hold or control of the Chinese mainland on Taiwan. And certainly she seems to have emerged victorious. This will be a big boost for those uh, talking about more independence and uh, a, a, a in Hong Kong and certainly a big boost for all those advocating that mainland China needs to uh, detract from its position of power uh, and hold over autonomous regions like Taiwan and Hong Kong. <laughs> And it seems uh, by all measures that uh, the Taiwan's leader Tsai Ing-wen has won at least by over 70 lakh votes. That is, uh, when that is the indication we're getting. The official numbers from the Election Commission of Taiwan are yet to emerge, uh, but the opposition leader has already conceded defeat in this very, very important election for Taiwan. And let's listen in uh, to some of those uh, celebrate, uh, celebrations that are coming in from Taiwan. <laughs> Thank you.